Hi guys, my name is Yanina Marie, and for those of you who don't know me, I am a fine artist and printmaker living in Mesa, Arizona. My work explores that which it means to be human, broken, untouched by what I lovingly refer to as darkness. Darkness wears a mask of many faces. For me, that darkness looks like anxiety, depression, and a weird non epileptic seizure disorder known as PMES. Today, we're going to be diving into my morning rituals and how I use these rituals to help me cope with my anxiety and this kind of set me up for a much better day in general. So before we dive in, I do want to make a quick disclaimer. I am an artist, not a doctor, not a psychiatrist, and while these rituals have been personally useful for me, again, I'm not a doctor or a psychiatrist. So without further ado, let's jump into my morning rituals. So before I dive into my morning rituals, I do want to briefly go over the difference between a routine and a ritual. So while I do have a morning routine that does incorporate morning rituals, I, they are two separate things. A routine is simply a set of things that you do in a certain order every day without fail, and eventually over time they just become tasks that you check off your to-do list. Whereas a morning ritual is something that's very intentional, very purposeful, and has a lot of both intention and purpose behind it. So I will touch briefly on my routine, but we're going to be mostly focusing on my morning rituals as that's what I found is the most helpful. So diving in a little bit to my routine, I typically wake up super early in the morning. And by super early, I mean anywhere from as early as 4 a.m. to as early as 7 a.m. And I would go into the reasons behind that, but some days I just can't get out of bed. It's, I have insomnia and sometimes my anxiety keeps me up till 2 a.m. and I just can't sleep. So my mornings tend to fluctuate in terms of my waking hours. But the one thing that I always keep the same is the first one to two hours of my morning are sacred. And the reason they are sacred is even though I'm up early, I'm not a morning person. I'm typically dealing with racing thoughts. I'm typically dealing with weird dreams that I'm trying to tell my anxiety brain to stop trying to interpret because they're just a dream and not important. And a whole other myriad of things are going on with me. So much so that I find it really difficult to interact with people first thing in the morning. So for me, I have just made the decision. My morning is me time. It is sacred. The only thing I'm focusing on is taking care of myself and making sure that I am starting the day in a way that's going to make me feel productive and feel calm and grounded. So uh, typically after I wake, I will take care of my basic self-care needs and that's just part of my routine. Uh, self-care includes everything from washing my face, uh, putting on some light moisturizer. Uh, for me, that's aloe vera just because I'm allergic to most lotions and things, which is a little fun, but aloe vera works great. So I'll put that on. If I know I'm going to be outside, I'll put on some light sunscreen. And then I'll brush my teeth, make my bed, put on some clothes that I deem are public appropriate as I'm going to be entering a communal space. So I don't want to be wearing something that if my mom walks in or my brother walks in or my brother's friend walks in, I'm going to be embarrassed. Typically though, I'm pretty lucky in the sense that I wake up early and I don't generally have to deal with people till around 7 a.m. If I wake up at 7 a.m., then it gets a little complicated. But after I deal with my basic self-care, I will then enter the kitchen for the first time and I will start my first set of rituals. And then my first ritual is really, it's a very simple ritual. I will turn on some form of um, music or an audiobook. Uh, recently, I was listening to The Art of Hoogly and I probably butchered that completely. I apologize if you are uh, Danish or Dutch and you know, the proper way to pronounce it, I don't. And basically the intention is I'm putting something on that can kind of give my brain something positive and spark maybe a little bit of creativity to give myself kind of permission to daydream and think a little. And while I have this audiobook or the music going on, I will start to tidy up my own living space. The reason for that, again, is for me personally, I find a cluttered or messy space tends to just it just really stresses me out and instead of getting things done throughout the day i will constantly be stopping and cleaning and then oh no i gotta go do this and it just creates this weird this weird internal battle um i always used to joke with my friends
signs. You can tell the state of my mental well-being if you walk into my house and it's trashed. If my house is trashed and I'm wearing clothes that look a little rumpled, I'm probably not doing okay. <laughs> just, just not. Um, so while I am cleaning, I will typically give myself up until the whistle of the tea kettle. So while I've got my music and my audiobook going, I'll start the tea kettle. And then once the tea kettle whistles, I pull it off the stove and I go into uh, my cupboard and I pull out my giant box of herbs and I start my second ritual of the morning. And before we get into that, um, I do want to make another quick little disclaimer. I'm not an herbalist. I'm an artist. I really love herbs and I have spent a lot of time studying herbs, but I'm not an herbalist. I have not actually taken any formal education in herbology. So while I do love herbs and I'm happy to provide you with a list of herbs that I personally find helpful for my anxiety and have found to be really successful when used as a tea, uh, I'm not an herbalist. So Getting back to the ritual of tea making, I will typically make a special blend of tea for the day. And while I'm picking out my herbs, I'll typically be thinking about, well, how am I feeling? Do I need a mood booster? Do I need protection? Do I need, like, how, how am I feeling? And so I'll pull herbs based on how I'm feeling for the day and what I'm hoping to accomplish or what I think I'm going to need. And then I will allow that to uh, steep. And while it is steeping, I will then switch tasks and do what I refer to as my magic pages. It's not really a ritual, but it's something that I do recommend that if you have anxiety and you do suffer from some sort of mental illness, journaling is definitely a great step and for no other reason than to help you deal with your own personal thoughts. Um, so typically for me, I will try and do anywhere from one to three pages. I used to try and do gratitudes, but it didn't work for me. Um, I have the type of anxiety who'd be like so stressed out about having to write 10 things I'm grateful for that my anxiety brain would be like, what do you mean you have nothing to be grateful for? Are you just an ungrateful person? Like what type of person does it make you be if you can't even like list things that you're happy about and grateful to be in your life? Like, no. So we don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. We just focus on doing one to three pages. And then by this point, my tea is probably oversteeped, but it's okay. <laughs> so I will pour myself a cup of tea and then I will start the final set of rituals for my morning which is building my personal altar so that I can sit down and do some meditation. Um, some of you might have issues with a personal altar but for me I just find there's something really calming about like intentionally wandering through my space and picking out things that either have sentimental value or just things that I am attracted to for the day. I have a variety of crystals that I love. Um, and they have various metaphysical properties. Quartz is something you can program so I can actually like sit and program it for whatever it is that I'm hoping to accomplish that day. I could also pull out some amethyst if I'm feeling particularly vulnerable and might need some protection. If I'm feeling like I really just need to be calm and gentle with myself, I'll typically pull out some rose quartz because it's typically been known for promoting self-love and healing and just love in general. Um, but once I have set up my personal altar, I will then sage myself with either Palo Santo or traditional sage. Um, at this point, my cat has kind of caught on to what I'm doing, so I'll sage the cat because he wants in on the saging. Um, and then I will sit down for my version of meditation, which is just taking 10 deep breaths. Um, I'm not very good at meditation. I hope to be able to evolve my little 10 breath practice into an actual formal practice that I can be like, I do five minutes of meditation and I do a guided meditation, but right now I'm just struggling just to get that level of clarity. It probably doesn't help that my cat is also in my lap, chewing on my toes, chewing on my fingers, chewing on my hair, rubbing and being annoying because obviously I am sitting down to cuddle with him and not meditate. But I'm working on it. Um, and then finally, I will do a bit of uh, spiritual practice for me that includes tarot and automatic writing. Uh, I know tarot is 
a bit of a touchy subject. Uh, I personally look at tarot as a means of self-reflection rather than any means of like, predicting the future. I see it as a way to find symbolism and meaning in my own life, which helps open up my brain to think about things in kind of an introspective fashion. Like, I'll pull cards, what's my advice for the day? And I'll really read the description, really look at it and be like, oh, well, I could see how maybe in this area of my life I should focus on being a little gentler. Um, and then automatic writing is a process that is typically used by mediums to contact spirits. I'm actually using it to uh, talk to my inner child right now as I'm working on what is known as shadow work. So shadow work is a process of facing your internal self, the side of you that you don't really show a lot of people because it's the side of you that you have deemed not appropriate for the public. It deals with your fears, your anxieties, your your dark side, if you will. And so I have been using automatic writing, which is a process of writing a question and then clearing your mind and focusing on something else and allowing the answer to just flow through you into the paper without actual thought. So you can take that one or leave it. I find it's really been helping me kind of deal with some issues that I had when I was a child and some trauma that came up at that time for me. And then after that, I clear my space and I will do some sort of ritualistic movement. Uh, lately, it's been an awful lot of uh, walking or yoga, just because, again, this is gonna, this is very personal to me. I find movement is something that, you know, some days I will actually even start my day with ritualistic music, ritualistic movement, not music, um, because I just need that element to help calm my anxiety. Um, I am the type of person that when it gets really bad, I'll actually do something that is very personal and something that I hope no one ever sees me do because they'll wonder what I'm doing. Uh, but when my anxiety gets really bad, I'll actually spin. I'll just turn on some music and I'll just spin until I fall. And I have found that actually works really well for me. Um, hopefully though, by doing daily movement and allowing myself to kind of express my emotions through movement, I can not spin as much, but that's kind of my morning routine in a nutshell. It includes the rituals that I use daily to help with my anxiety. And if you guys want, I'm happy to provide you with a PDF of the herbs that I take that have also been super beneficial. Just bear in mind, I'm not a herbalist. Um, maybe taking classes soon. And then finally, uh, I do want to close with a bit of a question. If you guys are curious at all about how I crafted this routine to incorporate these rituals and the steps I took to kind of finding them and making this set of rituals that I do work for me, I'd be happy to kind of walk you through that process as well. It'd be a little bit of a longer video just because I'll have to explain my thought process and that can get, that can get a little intense. <laughs> um, but I'm more than happy to create another video for that. Just leave me a message in the comment. Um, and also, I'd love to know what you guys do. What do you What do you do in the morning to kind of help you set your day up right and deal with the fact that you have anxiety, or maybe you have something different like depression or ADHD or something? I would love to kind of start a dialogue on what are some of the things that you guys do to help cope with your mental illness. Thank you guys so much for watching this video with me. I am super excited to be sharing it with you. Um, if you like this video, feel free to subscribe and also go ahead and hit that like button. I've kind of got a running joke going with my friend that I'll share with you. If this video gets 100 likes, I told her I would do an Instagram dance party and we would just turn on some music and dance for five minutes. So if that happens, I will let you guys know and I'll be happy to include you guys in that dance party as well. Until next time.